it really came down to uh, just not being able to live the life that I was living anymore. I knew that there had to be something more to life. Our kids needed us and to be together as a family and intentional. You know, I must have saw something that somebody had traveled for a year in an RV or something, and I was like, let's do that. And within a month, I think we bought a bus. Hey, welcome to the show. Today we've got simply us and a bus. Really, really excited about this interview. We met Aaron and Philan down at the McCone, Georgia United Tiny Living Festival this year, and we're just absolutely inspired by their lifestyle. They are living in a converted school bus as a family of five, and they are cruising around the country right now and really just showing what's possible as a family on the road. So Aaron and Philan have balanced careers as wedding photographers with this lifestyle. They've just returned from a couple months down in Puerto Rico doing some rehab work and we're really excited to learn from them today and hear more about their story. So let's drop into the show. Well, I'll start and I will just say that when she said, let's do this, I said, okay. And that's about, <laughs> that's about as much planning as it <laughs> took for me because I am hands down, hey, Aaron, let's do this. Okay. Hey, Aaron, let's try this. Okay. And then we just kind of make it happen. So I am actually going to let you talk about the why because <laughs> the why of what we did is way more her. So yeah, I'll you're definitely you... more content in life with just all things, you know, he's just much more like laid back and easy going and like everything's good I'm happy here I'm happy there but I guess it really came down to uh just not being able to live the life that I was living anymore you know I think it was um whatever the cliche word of being you know in the rat race you know so we have five kids 19, 17, 11, 9, and 7. And um, we just have three full-time with us now, but it's a lot, you know, between hockey, gymnastics, and soccer, and then baseball, and then violin lessons, and piano lessons, cello lessons, and any other sport that they want to try. And I think that our society just says that this is what you have to do, and this is what your kids are supposed to do in order to be the best, you know, in order to give them everything that they need, you know, and this is what makes our children and like Life was just insane, you know, and then there's the cooking and the cleaning and the cooking and the cleaning and then the raking and the gardening and <laughs> it just didn't stop. I felt like that's all I was doing is just cleaning and raking and cooking and, and I actually still do those things way more than I would have thought of in the bus, you know, it's not just like, <laughs> oh, now there's no more laundry and there's no more dishes. So you're still doing it, but I think all of it has more meaning now. Um, before I think all these other external things that you think are so important just aren't that important, you know, and we take these things so seriously and it was just too much and I felt overwhelmed and I knew that there had to be something more to life, you know, there had to be something bigger and more fun and enjoyable in life. <laughs> and so I just had enough. And we decided to actually move to another state. And so we were going to buy a house in North Carolina. We put a bid on a house and that didn't work out. And so I was like, all right, forget that, you know, because we'll just be doing those same exact things just in another city. And, uh, you know, I must have saw something that somebody had traveled for a year in an RV or something. And I was like, let's do that. And within a month, I think we bought a bus. Yeah, we had looked at RVs <laughs> and I wasn't too sold on the RVs safety factors and just the whole it's the same RV is the same thing and when she brought up hey let's buy a school bus and I know it was it was yeah it was probably about a month between when we got back from North Carolina and figured out we're gonna do this until we bought the bus but I think it was actually more like a week and a half from when we actually decided to do the bus route starting researching them and then bought the bus and it was like that's it. We're also spontaneous, but I wouldn't have any other way. I'd say the other thing, looking back, one thing that I've seen now is we both work from home, so we are around our kids all the time. But even though we were around our kids all the time, we were missing out on a whole bunch of stuff with our kids. And now that we're in the bus, I feel like we are much more a part of our kids' lives than we were before. Again, even though we were there full time, this is more, I think it's more intentional. And you're, you're definitely with your kids and spending 
more of that quality time. And hopefully the benefits we'll see in that is going to be not only short term, but then long term in their lives yeah. as they as they grow up. Absolutely. I'm curious as to because your kids are crazy, crazy. And <laughs> their ages again, 11, 9 and 7. So what was that like convincing them? I mean, kids that have friendships like that. I know a lot of families looked at us like we were crazy, but we hadn't even started school. And then other people say, well, at least you're doing it before they get to school and they make friendships. You pulled your kids out like probably right in the middle of it. You have older kids as well. But how did you convince them that this lifestyle was going to be positive? And did they believe you or was there a lot of hesitation and doubt around it? Freya was easy. She's a seven year old. So she was like on board. (laughs) And she had just been in Montessori school for two years. So she had a couple of friends, but she also didn't have like those deep established relationships yet. And so for her, it was like, you know, when we were building like day whatever of the build, her and Brig, who's the nine year old, were like, can we sleep on the bus? I mean, they were like, they were ready to go. So for her, it was really easy. For Brig, he doesn't do well with change in general. And he had been to the regular public school. Then he was in Montessori. Then he was in the gifted program with his brother. So he had done a lot of uncomfortable change in a short amount of time. So we actually had talked about even going in January. So we Mm. didn't leave on the road until July. And when I get an idea, I'm like, okay, let's do it tomorrow, you know, if not today. And so, you know, I hear other people who are like, oh, we've been planning for two years and we're going to, I'm like, two years, there's no way I'd want to do it anymore, you know? And so I'm like, we're doing it right now. And that's what I need it right now. I just knew I needed some big, huge change in our lives. Oh, Doing it right away, so January. he was in third grade and his teacher was phenomenal because he's not a difficult child, but he's definitely got a couple more special things, you know, about him that we need to like adjust schedules and he needs to know everything. You know, he needs to know what's coming next. He needs and he, you know, like the change and new things are really hard for him. His teacher was so phenomenal for him in third grade. She just took that time with him every single day and she just like he progressed so much because he was kind of a hitter he doesn't know how to like express his emotions except to just hit right away when he's frustrated or when he's happy (laughs) yes it's not like he doesn't like you or anything he just doesn't know how to express himself and so his teacher was just so fabulous and I was like okay you know we can't pull him today you know we can't pull him January 1st it would not be healthy we didn't think and so we did wait until the end of the school year you know instead of really pushing it and try to go sooner we waited till the end of the school year so he can at least you know finish out that year with her otherwise I think he would have been really resistant and not as happy with being on the bus I think it would have been actually really detrimental to so to speak you know long term wise and I'm going to jump in really quick about Mrs. Long because I gotta bring her up so her and her husband have a summer home in northern Wisconsin and our very first stop was at their summer home. And we stayed with her and her husband and their two kids and their dog yeah. on their property on this cabin. And for Brig, that helped him a lot too, because all of a sudden he was excited about getting the bus. He was stoked, but it was also, hey, we're our very first stop is we're going to your teacher's house. So for him, I think that eased that initial impact of the change and of the journey because we left our house and two days later, we're at his teacher's house and we had some mechanical issues and some things in the bus in the first couple of days and we were able to hunker down on their property and I was able to take care of those mechanical things and you were too, but then like his teacher just was like, oh, okay, we're going to take Brig and all the other kids and we're going to go do this and they just like left for the day. That's cool. we're able to give us that opportunity (laughs) to get get the things wrapped up. But I think that really helped in Briggs change. Cashin is our oldest one. He's 11. He is technically in fifth grade. He was probably the most resistant yeah. because he's been with the same group of friends five years for five years. Right. So, yeah, he was pretty bummed about leaving. And it's funny, like, talking about this now, I'm kind of like, gosh, maybe I should have put a little more thought into my children <laughs> when I decided to live on a bus, you know, for a year. Like, I don't think I really thought about them at the beginning, you know? It was just like I knew our family, even just 
me because I needed a change, but like our family needed a change. We needed a wake up call, a reset. You know, we just needed to be more mindful and present with our children, which we hadn't been for 10 years. And with each other. Yes. <laughs> and with each other. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so Cashin was difficult. He was a little bit resistant. You know, he was like, I don't want to leave my friends, period. But at the same time, he wasn't like, no, I'm not going ever. You know, I think, though, that we're very like open and very spontaneous family we always have been and so I think like we travel a lot anyway you know and we're just like okay today we're gonna go we just found this Priceline hotel for 50 bucks we're going to Madison Wisconsin we're going to drive to New Orleans we're gonna go here so we've always been very like up and go and doing new things and trying new things and new sports and new this you know so I feel like we've always been trying to be like a go with the flow kind of family Mm -hmm. so he actually did really well you know and it was funny because our first month was so stinking hard and then Cashin was like, I had a great time, you know, everything was great and happy. And I'm like, okay. You know, yes, it was, honey. Yeah, tell me a little bit about the first month. So you made the transition. I know we've talked about some of these <laughs> stories, but I want to know what day one, you know, were you convincing yourselves that you made the best decision or pinching yourselves that this is actually what you got now? So I'm going to back up to the day before day one. And Flan and I had been working on the bus nonstop for a good solid two or three weeks, like seven in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, saws, hammers, drills, everything, neighbors coming over and helping (laughs) here and there, Um, other neighbors wishing we'd hurry up and finish so we would leave. (laughs) Um, But the day before we left, Philan was like, that's it. We're leaving tomorrow morning. Yeah. If it's not done, it's not done. If it's not done, it's not done. If there's not a door in the bathroom, (laughs) if there's not, this isn't working. Aaron, you need to finish up what we're doing. And that last day, we finished up the gray water tank. (laughs) We finished up some other things that like had to be done and packed the bus. And that was it. (laughs) And so day one, we knew we were heading to our teacher's house. So we had a plan for like the next day, but that was about it. And so when we left... We were going to leave at like 8 in the morning, and then that became 11, and then that became 3 in the afternoon, and we made our rounds. We did stop at a friend's brewery Mm. and picked up some beer for the road. (laughs) We stopped at our other really good friends and said goodbye to them, or we'll see you later to them. And then we got on the road, and we're driving down the road. We're like 4 or 5 miles from home, and I'm thinking, this is great. We're just going for it, and Flan says... Something doesn't smell right. And I sloughed it off. I was like, whatever. It's a bus. We hadn't really driven the bus very much. that was also after the doors flew open on the highway. Yeah, that is. Like, the doors fly open, and we were like, (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) So I'm literally, like, we're doing, like, 65, which is the most you can do. But I'm sitting on the bottom stair holding the door shut (laughs) on the highway. I'm like, oh, my God, this is not even happening. (laughs) It was really funny. Yeah, I forgot about that. (laughs) Well, she had a older car when you were growing up? 67 Ford Fairlane. And she said, it smells like my car when it was like overheating. And again, my brain is going, hey, we're on the road. We're doing this. There's nothing stopping us. We're going for it. And I'm like, okay. And unfortunately, I wasn't being a good listener. And I was like, whatever. And we're driving up the road and now we're seven miles from home and the engine just stops, like cuts out. We're going down the highway and (laughs) I throw it in a neutral. And luckily there was a ramp there. So I pulled over under the ramp and onto the shoulder out of the way. And it was dead. Like I'm turning the key. There's not a click. It's not a bad starter. There is nothing. (laughs) And in my head, I'm thinking about safety of the kids. I'm thinking about the story of so-and-so that got ran into on the highway because you're on the shoulder of the highway and our whole family in there and then I'm thinking okay we just spent four months building this bus and we spent how much money on this bus and all the blood sweat and tears and it's that's it we've made it seven miles we're gonna get a tow truck it's gonna tow us back to our house that we don't even live in anymore and we're gonna have to kick out our renters and be like okay guys we're back we made it a whole seven miles and there was a huge amount of support from our family and friends and other people in the community and it was like no we can't go back we can't be like well we failed in day one and um, we were pulling a car at the time so we unhooked our car I sent Flan and the kids to a restaurant because I wanted them off the highway and we called for a tow truck in my head it's dollar signs and how much is this going to cost and the guy gets there and he shakes a few wires and we look around the bus and he gets inside before he hooks it up and it fires right back up 
and the obvious thing was still get it checked out. So at the top of the ramp was a truck yeah, service station. Enough. So we drove our bus being <laughs> followed by the tow truck like a quarter mile to the service station. Spent that whole next day with them ripping apart the bus to try to figure out what was wrong. And six hours into them ripping apart the bus, the mechanic, again, can you explain to me what happened? Because the ECM in our bus doesn't work, so he couldn't pull any codes. So it was just trial and error of trying to figure out what was wrong on the bus. And I went with him through the story again about how there was this smell. And he goes, oh, well, I did have to put two gallons of radiator fluid in your bus. You probably just overheated <laughs> and the auto shutoff kicked in so it wouldn't blow the engine. And I was like, oh. So he put... Yeah, so six hours, a thousand dollars later, and he's like, she runs like a champ. <laughs> <laughs> and if you would have listened to your wife and, <laughs> and it was just overheating. So that was literally day one. And day two, as we pulled into Mrs. Lung's property, we blew a wheel bearing in our trailer. So the wheel was shaking all over the place and we didn't know it. Luckily it didn't fall off. And then moving on from that, it was just tough. It seemed like every day there was something else yeah. and something else. And anything else. that could have gone wrong went wrong in the first month, you know, which maybe it was a blessing, you know, because we actually still pushed past that first month you don't realize how loud it is and how hot the engine is and the rattling and drawers flying open and the refrigerator fell out of the thing you know and all these little things and you're like this is what I just signed up for for a whole year like this cannot be and even the first couple days the kids were excited but they're just bouncing off the wall and there's no music on the bus we don't have a radio yet so you don't have like if you're driving cross country you can listen to a podcast you can listen to music you can kind of get that out and there was no out it it was just, like she said, the engine was just, you know, so loud. And we've made some adjustments on the bus, which makes it a lot easier to drive now. But Philanda mentioned we like to travel together. So before we normally take a trip or before we normally go somewhere, mm -hmm. we have not an itinerary per minute of the day, but we know we want to do this. We want to go to this town. We want to do this museum. We want to go to this park. We've kind of pre-planned it. And in that last three weeks before we left, when we were yeah. both working on that the hurt. bus nonstop, she didn't have any planning time. So we get in the bus with limited internet and yeah, all of a sudden really we're like well idea. where are we going <laughs> and and uh how, what, what was that like for your relationship oh my gosh <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll sum it up what relationship <laughs> we didn't talk for an entire month we would be like hey where are we going hey i'm pulling over gas hey what's for dinner but that was it at night, it wasn't even like, a, hey, good night. Hey, I love you, good night. Hey, <clears throat> nothing. It was just. You know what's funny though? In talking to somebody this weekend here at the festival, I think I realized that I feel like you internalized. We like flipped roles in our lives almost, you know? I'm more of like the pessimistic, like, this could happen bad and this is going to be bad and this is, you know? And then I'm never like hurt in the end if it doesn't go right. And he's just super go with the flow, optimistic, you know, everything's happy, go lucky. And he was just like, scowling cash in the oldest he's like why is daddy so grumpy all the time you know and I'm like um I don't know good question and it really hit me that I feel like you probably internalized so much more because if the bus broke down it was your fault if something happened it was your fault because you built it you did it the solar wasn't working right you know getting water we didn't know how often you had to get water so you'd run out of water um you know just so many little things like I think it was just like it burdened you so much more and you just felt this huge weight and you were really grumpy for like a month straight you know I've never seen him so unhappy for so long and I just like put a smile on my face every day and I'm like okay kids you know this is what we're doing and life is great and <laughs> let's just push through you know so we really did turn roles and I really do probably attribute it a lot to yeah. you just taking it all on yourself I think it really hit both of us probably how much it was affecting us and how much it was affecting me we were somewhere in Oregon I think that's where it was. And I remember looking at you and I was like, that's it. We're oh, done. Yeah. We are done. It's like we're going home there, tomorrow. And it wasn't a question of, hey, this kind of sucks. <laughs> hey, this kind of isn't going well. It was like, no, I am putting my foot down. We are turning the bus east. We're not stopping anywhere else. We are going home. We're throwing away this bus. I think I even said we're going to burn this you bleeping did. bus and I am <laughs> done. We're just going to let it burn. I don't care. It was just horrible. And I say this with intense honesty. It was the worst month of my life. Like you said, <laughs> I've always got a smile on my face. You know, it's like anything can go wrong. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. And it was just horrible. 
in the middle of being horrible, <laughs> it was amazing, <laughs> which is so we bizarre. Saw some amazing we stuff. saw some amazing stuff, and we totally actually we've talked about we're like, well, we got to go back yeah, to the Pacific Northwest because we hole. missed. <laughs> we got so much, but we missed so much because we were just so ugh. Um, outside of taking the stress of this lifestyle, which is a lot, what do you think it was? Do you think if you had just moved to a new place, do you think it would be the same? Do you think if you decided to homeschool or made some other massive change in your life, would it come in the same way? Or was there something you had to grow through or, or this just compressed certain things that needed to change in your lifestyle? I think with us, it was we've struggled as a couple for years. We've worked through some things, but we've really never taken the time to work through some of our issues. And I'm not sure if we really have even in the last eight months, but I think our communication has gotten better since then. And I don't know where we would be if we we hadn't done that tough month. We got back after that month and we had to get back in the Midwest for a wedding that we were shooting, which that made it tough too, because we left two weeks later than we wanted to. So our trip out to Washington and back from being, we're going to be able to go out for like eight weeks, went down to six weeks. And then days got cut into that because of the mechanical problems. And then we had to like lose a day for parking a car in Fargo. There was just all these things where all of a sudden our time frame really got shortened and then we had to like rush to get back. So that was part of it. But when we got back, we went back to the coffee house that we like and sat in the same booth where we were and I internalized it. You said it. If we don't make a change like right now, we're done. Divorced bankrupt the whole nine yards everything was just done and it was like okay we needed yep. to work on us you know it. and it starts with us it all starts with us so that was it either you know we choose us and we work on us or and, and do you think i think we made the right choice i think so too <laughs> that was not my question that was not my question no i had to throw that in there <laughs> my question was going to be do you think moving into the bus helped you see that quicker or do you think that helped to facilitate the change because you began spending so much more time together and these things just came up? Um, I think that if we would have stayed in our house on the path that we were on, we would have continued to go back to the same things that we were doing and the same routine and the same cycle, not getting along, getting along, not getting along, getting along, never working on the problem, never figuring it out. And it would have just continued to spiral downward. And I think being on the bus has forced us to be better together well because being on the bus I, I mean i saw your postcard it's true it's like you can't have a shitty attitude on the bus because it sucks for everybody else so if you guys are the champions you're the leaders if you're not having a good time your kids aren't having a good time and if they're not having a good time you're really not having a good time so yeah you're kind of forced into figuring your shit out you are and i know that, that we work really well together like when i always traveling. tease like when we're together with sometimes without all of the like um, external circumstances, you know, sometimes other people and other places and too much stuff gets in the way of just us. But when we are just together and with just our family, we seem to work really well. And yeah, I can't imagine anywhere else I'd want to be. Nope. That's awesome. <laughs> so I found that even with this lifestyle, even though it's very exciting and engaging and you're always changing, one of the things you lose is the connection to community, you know, in the sense of community as you would have defined it when you're living on a whatever river road in Illinois. But how do you keep yourselves connected to community and your kids connected to community? I would say before for me, um, so I'm not always the most social person, you know, I think I get a little bit introverted sometimes, but then all of a sudden when I click with somebody or a group of people, then I'm just like, I don't know, I guess I'm just who I am. And I think this weekend really opened my eyes to that a little bit. And we have met some amazing people this weekend. And I guess it's people, you know, walks of life that all come together that are sharing this sort of similar journey. You know, we're all so different and we're all on different journeys, but at the same time, I think there's like this similar mindset probably in a lot of the people that were here. And I think that's actually one thing we actually lacked in our hometown was that we didn't have this community. You know, we had some really good friends and we had lived there for 12 years and some great 
great people that I love dearly, but it wasn't like friends with children, you know? It wasn't this group social, you know, outlet for parents and the kids. And, you know, and I think that really tugged at me a lot over the years. And we ended up in North Carolina for like three months and we met this amazing group of people. And going back to like Cashin, who's 11, who, you know, was the most resistant to going on the bus day three in this town, Barnardsville, North Carolina. He was like, so which house are we going to sell so that we can move here? And we were like, what in the world just happened? You know, and all of a sudden it was just like he clicked with this other family and their three children and being able to go fishing every day. And all of a sudden you have just these amenities that are at your fingertips, you know, that we didn't have where we were before. I think it's also like maybe broadened our horizons and our mindsets in a way to like be more open to people and let people into our lives and you know and then you and you do you find that like-mindedness and we have just you know made those relationships now it's almost hard now to leave like Barnardsville and start traveling again after being there for a couple months and now this weekend it's really I was like this is all your thing Erin like I don't need to go to this festival she, didn't want, she did not <laughs> want to I, I said hey we're going to this festival and she's like you signed us up for what <laughs> What do you mean I have to talk to people? You know what? You're going to do this fast. Yeah. I'm going to take the kids in the bike and I'm going to be downtown. I'm going to go was. to the museum or the coffee shop or whatever. And you won't see me all weekend long. And this can be all you. I like to be the center of attention. I always have. If you know me, that's who I am. I want to show off my bus. I want to hear the praise of, hey, I love how you did your bus. It's not only that. I also want to show people that you guys can do it too. So it's not just all me, but a lot of it's me. So for this weekend, this was all me. And we got here on rainy Thursday. <laughs> and I think Philan worked on the bus. I was ready to show the bus like it was. Like, hey, this is how we are. You you know, like it's a little messy. We'll straighten up a little bit, throw the pillows in the right place and that's it. And I don't know how to describe it, but Philan was like, no, the bus has to be, it's perfect for us, but it needed a few, we needed to touch uh, up some paint. We had like we needed, sand coming out of every crevice. It was like raining We did just spend a bus. month in Florida. So <laughs> the bus needed a lot of cleaning. So for that yeah. eight hours, like straight on Thursday when we got here, it was very much like cleaning mode and getting ready mode. And even after the end of that, she was like, okay, good. Like that's done now. And you have fun at your fest and, <laughs> and I'm going to go do whatever and Friday whenever it was the doors open and people started coming on the bus and I'm ready for solid and it was really cool because I would listen to her start chiming in about the bus and the conversations were different also I think a lot of my conversations were I'm a tour guide this is the things about the bus I had my little 30 second speech down if somebody would ask a technical question about the bus I would tell them or I'd bullshit them into like the right answer <laughs> and then a lot of the how does life work on the bus? I think that's what her story was more to a lot of the families that came in and a lot of the parents that came into the bus. So it was really cool that we were able to share a different aspect of being in the bus. Mm -hmm. And I was also able to leave. And I know a couple of times I'd come back and she was like, you've been gone for like three hours. It probably wasn't three hours. Oh no, but it was a couple of times. And <laughs> I'm like, really? really? <laughs> I never thought but it was like, great. oh, I've got to rush back because she can't handle it. I don't know, you got really comfortable with it really quick. And that yeah. did surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way. I have felt really warm and welcome since we've been here this weekend. It was really a really cool, neat feeling. It's been a great weekend. Um, but then like the family and community, you know, you still feel like, okay, you don't want your kids to be lacking in friends. But I always believe that like a kid knows how to be a kid. You know, they know how to be kids. They know how to play. But like our nine-year-old Briggy, who has always had the least amount of friends, you know, he'll have like one really good friend and that's it. And I'm very much that way too. So I kind of probably promote that. But he was gone like yesterday he was gone from the time we woke up until we had to like find him for dinner you know completely dark outside even the day before he would come home and he was like I made a new friend and then yesterday he's like I made a new friend you know and they were just off and gone and being little people and learning themselves how to like form these new little friendships you know and I feel like being adaptable and being able to do that I don't know I feel like it was really good for our kids and our whole family being here and just kind of making these little bonds with people and you, know, you had talked about the postcard about how if the 
parents give that example of being happy on the bus, then the kids are hopefully going to be happy. And I think the kids seeing how we relate with, with people, they're starting to hopefully pick up on that. We got into the Florida Keys where, by the way, yes, we saw your bus. You're, That's true. You're, yeah, <laughs> there's this whole other story about that. But um, we got there and some friends from that community in North Carolina were down there. And that's how we ended up staying on their parents' oh, property. Yeah. And we were down the road staying like a mile away on another property. And first thing in the morning, Cash and Brigger are like, all right, can we get our bikes off? And can we ride over to those other people's house? And yeah, can we leave? We gone. And we're like, yeah. And we are free range kids type parents. So for us, it was like, yeah, go. See you later. But it was really neat to have them. They had kind of already established this relationship with this family in North Carolina. And then to meet up them again while you're on yeah, the road. Yeah, that was awesome. And having them be able to further that relationship relationship with those other kids it worked and we're gonna see them again like I think in like three weeks mm -hmm. and you know we're this thing that we're doing next month and we're meeting up with another family from there again and I know that we're gonna be with you guys again absolutely and even the couple of other buses and people that we've met here you know you're gonna see them again and it's that it, yeah, it's been I guess really that cool. is that community thing like it doesn't have to be that you go to school with somebody you know every day day in you know seven hours a day because you're not really socializing in school except for your 20 minute recess and then now yeah we're building these like friendships that we're like taking with us you know sort of still in our hearts and our minds you know and I've kept in touch with a couple North Carolina families and they're actually flying to Puerto Rico to meet us for a week the one family we met there you know and then the family from you know that we went in Florida so it's like you're kind of bringing these people with you in that journey you are finding those people that we maybe didn't have in Rockford per se you know but then you're finding these people at all different walks of life that you share something with obviously you know this little bond and you click and you come together and I feel like sometimes those are the friendships that really last forever like my best friend from seventh grade I met in summer camp you know when I was little it was nobody from high school it wasn't anybody from grade school and she's like my sister today you know and it's we barely ever lived in the same state together you know but you can just you have those special connections with people that I feel like will keep some of these friendships forever now it's also I think part for now that we've been on the road it was funny when we first talked about leaving on the bus there were quite a few people that would say like, oh, we're gonna meet you on the road. We're gonna meet you up here. We're gonna meet over there. And one of the cool things, we were in North Carolina and two friends of ours, well, Flan's climbing partner and then another friend of ours, Rob, they drove down to North Carolina and they were like, hey, you know, we wanna see you guys and hang out. And they came down, they put a tent right outside our bus and Flan went climbing with them for a day. We cooked meals on the bus together and, and hung out with them for like a, a really long weekend. And, you know, just because there's that 10 hour drive or 12 hour drive, mm -hmm. you know, those really close relationships that we have still back from home, we're able to bring those with us. And even uh, the internet's kind of brought us yeah, all together. Definitely. And that's, that does help. We joke about the whole social media thing. Friends from back home will call Philan and be like, hey, I saw you did this or I saw you did that. And she's like, how do you know that? <laughs> and once again, I've posted way too much on Instagram, but in a weird way, the people back home, even like our family, they're still able to kind of come with us and at least be a part of yeah. that journey because we're able to to kind of give back and show what we're doing which for me being the social butterfly I need that so when I throw up a picture on Instagram and I oh so and so made this you know a good friend of ours from back home says hey you know thinking about you or that's awesome that you're doing that you know that they're kind of still with you which is for me that's huge where for others in our family maybe it's not as big but that's helpful for me sure <laughs> so if you had any advice for any families in your position thinking about buying a schoolie and I guess that's what this weekend it was all about at the United Tiny House Festival was showing our homes to people thinking about making this transition. But what advice would you give? Not necessarily technical about buy this kind of bus and this and that, but like big picture, financial, emotional, like what do you actually have to prepare for and would you do it again? I would say do it tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. I know that I don't ever want to go back to living in a big house again. You know, we won't go back and live in our house in Rockford. I highly doubt unless, you know, some circumstances you can never plan for, but um, I wouldn't want to do that again. A piece of advice, do it today because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. One of the things that people think is that we're on vacation. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so glamorous. You guys get to travel and see all this stuff. Stuff. Yeah, we get to drive for how many hours and put how many gallons of diesel fuel in our bus. It's, uh, it's way more expensive than you think it's, it's way more be. expensive. It's not as glamorous as the pictures on Instagram. <laughs> uh, you know, even though we are working on our stuff and we, we're much better as a couple now, whatever problems you had back home, you're still going to have. 
whether those are good problems or bad problems, you're still going to have them. And I think there is that misconception that, oh, you're on vacation. But when the general population goes on vacation, it's, you know, going out to dinner every night, seeing the attractions, going to Disney World, going to all these, you know, and it's a fun, great two week time. And then you're going back home to your life. And for us, it's full time living. It's not just being on vacation. You know, the struggle is real. There's all the kinds of stuff that you're going to experience in a bus, like where do you get water? Oh, the toilet just overflowed again. The, you know, there's all these things that are going to happen. I mean, it's it's totally worth it, yeah. but it's not just, oh, we're on vacation for yeah. a year. I think for me, like um, the part of doing it is that it's taught us so much, you know, and I still feel like it's such a huge learning experience, you know, everything that we've done. And just personally, it's been a huge learning experience for me. Like I've had so much more time to really really think, really, you know, kind of think my thoughts, you know, without some of life's interruptions, like that I said, are so important that maybe aren't just that important in the end. And the time you spend with your children, you know, I thought in the end, even if my kids didn't go to school for one whole year, they didn't learn a single thing, you know, I wasn't really homeschooling, which we are unschooling, um, which the more we do it, the more I'm loving it, but that we are, we're just mindful, we're present, we're with our family. And if they don't get that schooling, they're getting like more love from us in this one year than we have showed them in the past five years combined you know and I just feel like our kids need it us and they need it our love and just us and to be together as a family and intentional and you can do that at home and I know there are families that do that but it's just so much harder when you have all these external circumstances that you feel like you have to do I just I knew that that would benefit our family and our children more than anything you know I think a lot of us get so wrapped up in the busy work of life that we just aren't there for each other you know as much as we can be so that part has been really amazing and I thought you know maybe it would drive us a little crazy being all together in this little tiny space you know and there's times where I'm like everybody out of the kitchen you know and that's my biggest thing and they take like two steps and I'm like <laughs> okay I can actually open the drawers now you know and that it actually works but it's been so worth it all of us just being together and you know learning about each other and learning about your children and who they are and seeing their personalities coming through it's been really cool you know it's funny we a couple of weeks ago it was okay we're coming up we've been on the road for eight months and we had said we're going to do this for a year and I thought okay a year will be good and in a year we're going to know what we want to do and we'll be done with this in a year and it'll be this awesome experience that we've done for a year and I know that we've we're at, we're at eight months so the other day it was like we've only got four more months left this sucks like I don't want to be done I don't want to be done and at first I was like oh no we have to be done in four months this is, and then I was like wait a second no we don't we don't have to be done and we've talked about this about what we're going to do next year I don't know what we're going to do next year I know we're going to do it next week but in two months from now I have no idea where we're going to be but we are definitely not going to be stopping in a year we've already to each other committed at least that we're going to do another year and after that I don't know and that's really the cool thing for me is seeing this journey and how it's progressed I will say that in the grand scheme of things in the universe higher power God whatever you believe in there is a reason that we're doing this and we've seen that time and time again on the road you pull over for some reason and then all of a sudden you meet somebody and it's the somebody in the grocery store that walks up to your boss and says hey man I know what you're going through you're in about what week three or four and I'm like what <laughs> you know he's like I did it for five years he's like I can see it in your face but man keep keep going you know you got this you got your kids you're doing it and that was like how did that happen you know, we pull over because I made a decision to drive north instead of follow my map quest directions. We get stuck in traffic and we're in front of a church and the pastor is like, hey man, what's up? Why don't you guys stay here? And I have four buses. And how did that work? Yeah. You know, like, how is it that we came here? How is it that I saw your truck in Key West and all of a sudden you're pulling in two nights ago and I'm like, park over here, kind of by <laughs> us so that we're going to, you know. And then all of a sudden we've forged this friendship that I know that the the friendship that we've established with not just you and I, but as two families, I'm like, oh, I'm going to know these guys for basically the rest of our lives in some context, in some form. And it's pretty cool how this is all working itself out. And again, me being a believer and it's just, 
yeah, it's going to work out. It's just reminded me that it is, and it does. And you had mentioned something, you know, the, the financial struggles or the relational struggles or what are we going to do or we're going to go. It is all working out. It's not easy. There are days when you're just like, oh. But at the end of the day, you're going to bed. You're like, okay, it was another good day. And it's been an awesome experience. I can't wait for the next month. Awesome. So how can people find you guys online? So we are simply us and a bus. And that's all spelled out primarily on Instagram. But we are also on Facebook, Twitter, and a wee bit on YouTube hopefully a little more. And this whole podcast thing is pretty cool. So I don't know, there might be something coming up too. But yeah, simply us and a bus and come follow us. Join in our journey. Don't just follow the pictures, like get immersed in it. All right. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. <laughs> awesome chatting with you. So that was Simply Us in a Bus. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to find out more about Aaron and Philan's life, living on the road with three kids, please follow them on Instagram at Simply Us in a Bus. This was the third episode of season one, Told from the Road from Rewilding Parenthood. Next week, we'll have Adrian Lacey, who is traveling with his family of four back to France from working in Mexico for the past three years. But instead of flying right there, they decided to bike from Houston, Texas to Miami, Florida. So really interesting story and uh, about how these guys travel differently and why biking and bikepacking has always been a big part of their lives. Rewilding Parenthood was produced on the road by Afuera Vida, music and sound editing by Mercedes Riva, and music by Tomas Tirel. Thanks so much for listening. If you like what you hear, please consider leaving us a review or sharing it with a friend. You can find us on Instagram at Rewilding Parenthood, and we hope to have you back next week for the next episode. Thanks so much. <laughs>